What's going on, guys? We are now live. Um, I want to start off by just saying, uh, if you guys have trouble like finding the link, ever finding the link to the live stream, or just want to make it easier, I always post the link to Facebook, which is just Michael Barons, um, like about twenty minutes before. I also post it to my Instagram story, just kind of keep you guys updated, so you can find out like when I'm actually going to do the live stream. But today, we're going to be talking about a really fascinating topic that was. Brought to my attention by Hillel, who if you guys who if you guys have ever been in the live stream, he's been in every single one, um, and he kind of recommended me look into this. And yeah, when I was when I was researching it, I just found I found multiple fascinating studies. I just kind of I literally just got lost in like going from one study, and then one study would talk about something, and then I would just like look into one that they referenced. Um, Hillel said he's excited, number sixteen in the row in, in a row. Um, Actually, let me let me double check something real quick. Sixteen, yeah, sixteen in a row. I just want to make sure I had that right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I looked into multiple different studies. You could find the links to those in the description um, after this Q and A if you guys want to look into them. But some of the studies, uh, this is like one benefit, I guess, of like going to a university. I get get access to like so, to some studies that um, if you guys look into them, you might have to pay for the full article, but. You guys could still see like an abstract of it if you guys click the link in the description after this video. But yeah, I'm just going to start and get into the topic of fascia. So I just kind of want to start off by defining what it is because before I even looked into it, I was kind of asking myself, I, it was always kind of like an abstract thing to me and I mean it still kind of is because it's just so, I don't know, it's pretty bizarre. But it's basically just connective tissue that's webbed throughout our body that surrounds like muscles, tendons, organs. It's, it's, it's the biggest organ in our body. Like people, it, it's been said that like skin is our biggest organ, but in the studies I was reading that this is actually the biggest organ that is throughout our whole body. Um, like I said, surrounding muscles, tendons, organs, and it's actually the number one. Um, it's used, it's used mainly for proprioception, which is basically just knowing it's it's basically the body's way of knowing where it is in space. So if you guys like have ever seen like a cat, like how they move, um, like how like a martial artist moves, like the flowing, like the the slow flow, um, like effortless look. That's mainly from fascia. And um, like I said, it's it's even more important, even more important for proprioception than our eyes are. So eyes are actually like the second, um, um, like biggest sensory for knowing where we are in space and according to the studies I was reading and looking into the uh, fascia is actually the, the best for, for our body to know where it is in space. So second kind of, second question I just kind of wrote down just going off. Like I said, these, these Q, Q and A's I do throughout the week, like one or two throughout the week are going to be like one page summaries of like everything I look into, just kind of make it concise to the point. And yeah, just, just try to bring down the, bring it down to the key points, uh, whatever the topic is. So I kind of wrote down like why, why I even talk about this? Um, one, it was brought to me again by Hillel. Told me to look into it, and I, like I said, I've, I've heard this thrown around from stuff I've looked into with jumping and and you know, I said, again, like Hillel bringing it up and stuff. But I wrote, just wrote down like why I even talk about it. So it's a major component responsible for elasticity, and like I said, it can be seen in uh, martial artists, kangaroos. Also, um, there, there's actually a, a name for the mechanism that kangaroos move by, and it's called like the catapult mechanism, which is basically like a stretch shortening cycle. Um, but yeah, it's the way they move, like dancers and and jumpers. So it's just like the fluidity of of a movement. And I just kind of tied this together to jumping. And I feel like it's why if if you ever see like the best jumpers, like the best dunkers, like um, I know there's been a couple like a, a few names thrown out there. Like I mean Zach Levine uh, for one in the NBA, or just um, if you guys have ever seen like Dexton on Instagram, like he he's been referred to as like a pretty elastic jumper, elastic looking and it's it's from those best jumpers that make jumping look effortless that seem to have a connection to fascia. So, um, yeah. So just to get more into fascia, uh, I guess a, a, an interesting point would be you know, or an interesting question to bring up would be: Can it be remodeled? Like, can you act? Can fascia actually be changed, or are you just like born with however it is, and that's what you're stuck with? Um, and it actually can be remodeled up to. Um, 30% of it can be renewed in six months and 75% of it can be is can be renewed in, in two years in a healthy body. So, you know, that's, you know, getting the right, getting enough sleep, diet, um, stretching, proper fascia stretching, which I'll get into later. 
Um, there's actually different types of stretching you could do more specifically for fascia compared to just normal dynamic stretching, um, which there is dynamic stretching that, that can be involved with fascia, but there are also types like, uh, I'll get into that later in this Q&A. But, um, and a question I kind of wrote down from this that I thought about when I was, when I was going through and reading, you know, if 75% can be renewed in two years, I just wrote down like, the, like, would that mean that it would take two years to, to adapt to a certain type of training? And I feel like that it would make sense that that is the case. So maybe that's why it, it usually takes, I saw, I've seen ranges. So like I said, I saw the two years and I saw between like six months and two years. So, I mean, there's, there's a wide range to where this fascia like adaptation can occur, but it seems like between like one and two years is like a safe, is a safe bet to say that it, that would take, it would take fascia training. It would take that long of fascia training for your, for the fascia to actually be remodeled and then adapt to whatever stress in, in this case, jumping that you're putting it through. So, um, I mean, I feel like that kind of makes sense. And that's why, that's why it, it seems like it takes so long. I feel like to see any, any gains in jumping, like, I mean, even to get a couple inches, it might take a, you know, a few months or like I wrote down here two up to two years to even see significant gains. So if it can be tied to that, then I feel like that would make sense. To, that it would make sense that that's why it's, there's so much training involved. I mean, there's also like timing and muscle and, and a bunch of other things that go into, you know, training the jumper training to, just perform better. But in terms of fascia specifically, it could take again up to like two years to even see any significant gains from that. So um, another key point I wrote down is that as we age, fascia actually becomes flatter instead of crimped, which the crimped, the crimped shape of fascia would be from. So one of the articles I read kind of summarized what fascia looks like as if you guys have, if like, if you eat an orange and you look at the inside, like there's, there's little like webbing and like veins, that's kind of what fascia is to like muscle and tendons and organs stuff. That's just kind of what it looks like, what it, what it represents. Um, so as we age, those, that, that structure actually becomes flatter instead of crimped like a spring. And another, it was interesting, like another review I read, it wasn't actually, it's not actually that, um, that fascia is like is springy or anything. It's just the, the elastic nature of it is what makes it seem like it could be, it could represent or it could be modeled back to like a spring. So um, that's kind of how fascia changes over time as we get older. That's why training it is so important. That's why like doing certain, you know, the right type of stretching, getting the right amount of sleep and, and, and other things for it to be recovered properly, you know, for whatever training you're doing um, is important because it, again, as we age and as we, as our lifestyle changes, then that could become flatter uh, over time. So and um, to kind of tie this to, to back to like how you actually train it and, and how long it takes for, for new adaptation to occur, whatever strain, whatever strain is being applied. I mean, this kind of, may, this is kind of may, might be like intuitive, but whatever strain you're putting on it has to be greater than, it says should, 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 should exceed habitual activity. So like sitting or walking, if you're trying to train fascia to become stronger, become more elastic you have to apply more, you have to apply more of a strain to it. So that's why I like loading or doing like drop jumps or um, just like hops, just like stiff legged hops. Like that's why those things are so, would be so important in training fascia because um, you have to apply, you have to apply so much strain to them for them to even, you know, adapt or be remodeled over time. So, you know, if, if you were just be training um, like more muscle specific movements, then your fascia might not necessarily be getting trained if you if you were doing like drop jumps or just hops or you know like skip hops or just um, like like I said stiff legged hops stuff that stuff that would put more force on fascia and tendons for them to actually ha have something to adapt to. Um, and another key point with fascia is that it's actually um, responsible for prevent like it's it's a major component in preventing injury. So like. That's that's why it would be important to apply more apply more of a load to it, so that way that when that strain is applied, uh, like in jumping or in whatever activity you're doing, that it it will like there there will be an adaptation to that force, so you that so that way you don't get injured by just kind of applying it all at one time. So that'd be another important reason to actually train it and get it to become more elastic and adapt. Um, 
so one of the studies it was talking about how strain magnitude and strain frequency has to be of high level and low frequency so so I think the the one that they used was a 90% load at like four repetitions of, of just it would, it would be essentially doing calf raises on like a leg press machine so they had the ankle at 90 degrees the hips at 140 degrees and the the quad like the rest of the leg at 180 so basically straight leg ankle bent at like at 90 degrees and then hips just kind of um dipped slightly forward at 140 degrees so they did that they had two groups they did one group with uh, 90 percent load four repetitions and then i believe the other one was like 60 50 to 60 percent load at like seven seven to ten repetitions and they only found an increase in tendon stiffness and elasticity in the group that um that had the load of 90 percent with four repetitions compared to the one with the lighter load and higher repetitions so i just found that really interesting um, I, I just read what I wrote down here. So the results showed high magnitude, low frequency is best to improve stif stiffness and elasticity, and also decrease in and also um, have an adaptation to a decrease in strain. So basically, that's where the injury prevention comes in: is that your the tendons and the the fascia is able to is able to take on a higher strain without um, without them being injured. So. So I'm gonna get to just a couple more points. Uh, a couple more points here. Uh, let's see. Uh, recording. All right. Hello. What are you thinking about this so far? Do you feel like it makes it makes sense from what you've heard? Or I don't know what you've heard about, but. Like I said, Hillel, like we've talked about a couple different jumpers on here, and Hillel always like relates it back to fascia, which again, it is it's been a really interesting topic to look into. Okay, so this was this was in one of the studies I um I read too, and it was this is kind of back like what the old what old research um kind of how how old research was tied back to jumping and like different things they tested and different theories that they thought went into jumping so it was previously thought that the energy released from the shortening of muscles passed through passive tendons leading to movement so basically what i got from that was that it, it used to be thought that muscles did most of the work and it was just pat like the the energy the energy created from muscles was just passed through tendons and tendons had nothing to do with the movement or had very little to do with the movement it was mostly muscle but um as I as I went when went more into depth with this, it said that this is true for biking, and like this would be true for biking as muscles change in length and fascia remain passive. So basically, there's there is no like quick bounce movement in biking. Like that's more of just a slow drawn out movement compared to jumping. Um, so that's more passive. But however, with a movement like jumping, the muscles contract. The muscles contract quickly, not so much change change length and the lengthening of the, length, the lengthening and shortening of fascia is actually what's re, what's mainly responsible for the movement of jumping. So I found that really interesting. And again, like the the major exercise that I, that I looked into that actually um, would be most beneficial to work fascia are drop jumps because of the high force that must be generated to accelerate from the push off point. So that would increase like the force and the amount of load that that are on that's on the the muscle tendon complex. And this, and what what they've equated fascia to is basically force. So fascia is responsible for the force generated, and the tendons are um, are more responsible for the uh, the ve the velocity from the recoil. So it has to do more with the speed. Um, so Halal said the hyperarch is a fascia training system. Yeah, so that's true. Like Halal said, um, if you guys have ever looked into like the hyperarch mechanism, I mean, that's kind of. I mean, I feel like that's just a label. But everything that goes into everything that that has to go along with just the term hyper arc, that's more what fascia is related to. So it's it's not just you know you know your your arc might build with with the training of the fascia, but it's act it actually has to do with what the actual movements that you're doing and how you're moving. So like I said, that's why it's interesting that 
that they tied this back to like kangaroos and how they move and like martial artists and dancers. It's basically like a, it's like a soft fluid motion. And when you see that, or, you know, when things just look effortless, that's, that can be, um, that could be relayed back to fascia. So I'm actually going to bring up one of the studies that actually talked about, talked a little bit about this. Um, I have it brought up. I think it talked, I think it talked about this with tur with turkeys, which is, Pretty interesting. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm just going to read it from here. So it says several researchers have studied the behavior of the contract contractile element and series elastic element during cyclic activities of animals. Um, I'm just going to get to. Okay, so they found that an increasing amount of strain energy stored within the hind limb tendons is useful is usefully recovered at faster, steady hopping speeds without being dissipated by increased stretch of muscle fibers. So right there, that's why with drop jumps, the point is to decrease the amount of time on the ground. So that way that you are you're releasing that stored energy from um, like from the tendons and the fascia instead of relying on muscle fiber. So uh, let's see. Uh, all right, let's search. I wanted to read this part about Turkey because it's pretty interesting. Okay, here we go. Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, so there's another study within the study that was referenced that um, Roberts et al. measured the muscle force and length change in running turkeys from which they calculated the work output of the muscle and tendon. It was found that as running, speeds, as running speed increased, contribution of the tendon in terms of positive work output increased. So um, like from the jumping test I did, like that's, that was one of the key points made for increasing vertical, like overall vertical is just increasing velocity, so increasing speed um, on the approach of the jump. So that kind of ties back to this, which um, I said in turkeys, it was from that as running speed increased, contribution of the tendon in terms of positive work increased. And then he concluded that muscles which act as active struts, so basically, so basically saying that muscles are more of a support rather than actually responsible for the, for the output of movement um, concluded that they act as struts rather than working machines to improve running economy. So I actually looked into <laughs> LOL turkeys are athletic. Yeah, so there's been like literally almost in every study I read, there was a reference to animals and how they move and how it's related to fascia. So there was one, there was that one which talked about turkeys. There's another one that talked about like gazelles and how they move and like how their their overall muscle, their like the overall muscle mass, like in in the the muscle tendon complex of a gazelle is very small compared to the tendons and ligaments and fascia. That's why they move, they can move so quick and so, um, like so effortlessly. So that was another one. And then, um, what was the, there's like, there's a third one. Kangaroos. Yeah. That was the, that was the other one that, that was talked about, which I mean, it's just all very interesting. And I mean, just like I said, martial artists, jumpers, um, and dancers, it's all been, it's all tied back to, to those things. And um, I, I know at the beginning I said I wasn't talking about stretching. So there's, there's different ways to actually work on stretching fascia to, to help it become more of like a, to help it kind of release and become more like a sponge. Um, so doing, I found out this was just was really interesting because like I've been, I've been doing like yoga type of stretches and from reading the articles like it, it, they they talk about how yoga isn't the best isn't the best thing to do to um to to stretch per se like stretch fascia because it's so it's so slow and fascia trading is more of like a bounce quick movement so if you want to if you want to do stretches for fascia the the stretches that you do should be more should be quicker i mean not not like you know like not as, as if you were training but they should be in this in the sense like almost bouncy so like they like in, in the study I was reading, they talked about how a cat stretches and how it puts its paws out in front and kind of like rocks back and forth. Um, so that's a stretch that can be done um, for a human using like a chair, just kind of putting your arms forward and kind of just like coiling back and forth or like putting your arms above your head and coiling back and forth. So 
that's more that's more um like that's more of a fascia type of stretch whereas yoga is just more of like a slow muscle release type of stretch so i feel like i won't be doing I'm, i'll probably change up my stretching routine now that i that i read about that instead of doing you know s slow yoga i'll do more kind of like a bouncing um type of elastic stretch it's really interesting because you know, it's 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 so crazy. That's why I like I love to look into stuff, and I love to hear your guys' suggestions on what to look into in these little topics. Because I feel like you might have like a bias because you've been doing something for so long, or you see it, you see it done on like a wider scale. So you might think it's more right, but then you know, like the more you look into it, the more the more you find out about it, you find out like there's there's little like nuances of like how you can improve it. And I feel like those finding those little nuances, you know, th those can end up being beneficial in the long run too. I mean, especially something like jumping where it seems like it could be so hard to get out of like a plateau or it could be so hard to gain like a, the last inch or two in a, in a jump that you need or whatever it might be. I feel like these finding out these like little, these little like jumping hacks almost um, can help with, with training and, and just like with the whole uh, increasing your vertical aspect. So another, another thing I looked into, which was actually just yesterday to kind of think about is that it was like a quick, it was a quicker video. I didn't put the link to that video in the description, but it was talking about the, like another way to train fascia is to, to train in vectors and not in like a straight line. So to actually train on like in like a diagonal or side to side front to back movement. Um, because like I said, because at the beginning we were talking about fascia is the, the, the organ that's most responsible for proprioception, proprioception. So knowing where you are in space. So, by training and like in vectors, you're, you have to, I feel like since, because that takes more control, it's going to inherently take more fascia, a more of a, a fascial response to actually be able to move, move in that way. So like, I, I thought about this and relate, like related it to kind of football players and how they move in space. So like, if you think about like a football player might have to go from a straight line to a diagonal or horizontal line in like one quick burst, like that's not going to be that's not going to be from from any kind of muscle shortening and lengthening. That's going to be more from um, like a stretch shortening cycle or like a, a fascia response to to actually make that movement um, like quick and explosive. So um, I, that's just kind of what I got from from listening to that like one minute video. I f it's, actually, I'll look it up really quick because this this guy actually posted a few videos on he's posted a few videos on like on fascia and like um, like how to train it. Like they're like short one to two minute videos. His name is Tom Myers. Um, yeah. He's made He's again, he's like, he's made a few videos on how to, so he's like how to train fascia um, with like different tips. So he talks about like tip, tip, uh, let's see. Tip one, he talks about vectors, tip two, lengthening, tip three, hydration, <laughs> Um, that was like another another major factor in fascia um, is to make sure you're hydrated. Like it's to make sure you're hydrated because I I think what I read it was like eighty percent water. Or so it was it was a crazy um, percentage of it is actually water. It's like it's water and protein. Like those are the two main aspects of fascia. Um, Halal said. So after you did the research, what did you think about fascia? I mean, for me, it's obviously the secret of athleticism. Um, I feel like it's definitely kind of changed like the way I think about like training. So like I talked about, it's definitely going to like, it's, I'm, I'm definitely going to kind of consider different ways to stretch compared to how I compared to how I have been stretching. Um, it's going to kind of take, I feel like it's going to take more attention off of like being caught up in strength training so much because so strength, so the, the, the way I thought about it with strength training, like the whole purpose of strength training is to basically just be able to increase the amount of force you could apply to the ground. I feel like for jumping and I mean, maybe for, for anything that you're training for, but to talk about, to talk about it with jumping, I feel like that's, that's the main purpose that anybody would be strength training for jumping is to be able to, to apply more force to the ground so they can, so they could essentially get higher up in the air. So from from reading about fascia, I feel like the focus should be less on maybe increasing, you know, the amount of the amount of weight you could put on the bar, and it should be kind of more 
it should be it should be more about controlling controlling the movement of jumping and just getting better and like making jumping making jumping more of like a fluid movement so i don't know to, uh, hello to answer your question after doing the research what do i think about it like I, I feel like it's a very important and maybe not talked about topic that i feel like if there was more information on it, it would be helpful but I mean, just from doing it, like I have, like I'm definitely gonna look. I'm definitely gonna look more into fascia. Like I'm not gonna just stop at this video and be like, okay, I'm never gonna look at fascia again. Like now that I've researched it and looked into it, I feel like there's been there's been very few there's been very few ways to say like, okay, by doing this, your vertical is gonna increase. Like I feel like there's been general ways, like saying, oh, getting stronger will increase your vertical. Okay, like what does that mean though? Like getting what stronger? Like just just doing, you know. Um, like doing just normal type of lifts like is that is that what you mean by getting stronger but so much of getting stronger after reading this is, is just about like being more elastic being more um, being able to being able to use force correctly I guess or most optimally so Halal said but you can't get up with only muscle strength you need the recoil of the fascia that's what gets you up right exactly so I feel like that's that's kind of what I mean Halal by by saying my attention is going to kind of maybe from researching it's going to switch from not not that it was always on like you know strictly muscle but it's that the way you train or like the way i train is going to is going to change to be more about recoil and like thinking about it in that way compared to just pure strength if that makes sense so yeah i feel like i, I feel like i'm gonna i'm gonna track this which Hello, like another interesting point. I mean, anybody listening or watching is is just that, like I, like I read here, it takes it could take up to two years for even a healthy body for elasticity for for uh, fascia to to replenish and and become adaptive to whatever strains you're putting on it. So it's like, I feel like that's that's almost like counter counterintuitive or counter how we live today. Like everything is so like right now, right now, right now. So if like, you know, I feel like that's why jumping is such like if you ever if you ever see somebody make any kind of improvements in jumping, I feel like it's never in a short, you know, it's never in like a short time span of like even a few weeks or a few months. Like, I mean, yes, maybe there's that point of like a minimum six months where you see drastic changes, but for like for like a full adaptation, like or I mean not even a full for like seventy five percent like the study referenced it could take up to two years. So it's just like if, if anyone is training to jump or if anyone's training to like increase their vertical or I mean even just better their movements in whatever sport they're doing or dance or whatever it is, that might take that that might take, you know, that long for you to see any kind of major imp in major changes with. So I don't know, I feel like with jump training especially, like it's a lot of patience and like it's a lot of kind of that's why that's why like I said I like to research this stuff because it's it's like little. It's like little things that might that seem like it's not, maybe not that it's missed, but that you have to really kind of dig to find. So, um, Hillel said, "Mike, you have better fascial fitness than most of the people." I could tell you that. Thank you, Hillel. I appreciate that. Um, I'm kind of curious. I don't know if, if you if you've posted um, anything to your Instagram or whatever, but I'd be curious because I know you said you've been doing like the hyperarch type of movements. Um, so I'm just curious, like how how the fascia complex is on you and. Very, like something very interesting um which is this is going to be kind of you know, like what what the hell why are you talking about this but one of my my girlfriend's cousins she's like four years old hello like that you might find this like like really interesting but she literally she only walks on the balls of her feet and like when i'm when i want to like when i see her again i just want to like ask her to jump as high as she possibly can and just see what it looks like because she would have no bias by watching, you know, any type, any type of YouTube videos on like jumpers or whatever. Like she's like, again, like, like five years old. So it would, it would, she would just jump in the most efficient way possible to get as high as she can. So I just kind of want to like see how that is. And maybe like as she, as she like gets older, see how she, how she jumps, you know, like if she could jump better than, than a lot of people her age and see if, see if that might have anything to do with it. But I think it's just it's just interesting to see, and, I, and like I was thinking about it, like maybe she walks that way because it feels like it's the most efficient way to move. Which it makes, I mean, it kind of makes sense because like a kangaroo, 
that's why they just they just bounce around because um, like another thing I was reading about is that you know muscle activation take it takes more energy for muscle activation than it does for muscle or for than it does for like tendon and fascia um, activation. So because like because like fascia is just basically a storing of energy from like a counter movement. So that's why, um, like before, you know, people do like standing vertical jumps. There's always that. There's always that down movement, which is like the the coiling, and then the 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 up movement from there, which is like the concentric motion. So that's why there's always like the eccentric and then concentric motion because you're basically making that. You're basically creating that stretch shortening, and and very little muscle is actually would actually be like used in that that movement of of trying to, you know, get like a max vertical off of a standstill. So I don't know, it's just really interesting, really interesting topic. Um, there's a lot more out there on it that I didn't, I didn't get into with this because I just wanted to kind of get the key points and talk about the key points on here. So yeah. Hello said, dude, that's amazing. I'm obsessed with that. That's pure nature before you get affected by the shoe. Yeah, that's, I didn't even think about that. Hello, but yeah, literally she like, Anytime she's just like walking around the house or whatever, like her mom says that, you know, she just, she always walks on her toes, like, or not on her toes, on the ball of her foot. And like, you know, I see it, like she just, every time it's just, it's almost like a bouncing more than a walking. So I don't know. I feel like it's just, it, it is just pure. Like Hillel said, it's like, it's more nature because it feels, it probably feels less strenuous. It probably feels easier. And that's why, you know, I thought it was interesting when the studies I was reading talked about how martial artists really incorporate fascia. And if you see how like a martial artist move, like it's, it's fluid, it's like bouncing. It's not, it's not like walking and stepping. It's just like a bouncing fluid motion. So I don't know. It's really, really interesting topic. Um, and there's still like a lot of research going into it. Like I think the review, the, probably the best article I read, uh, let's see. This review article was from 2006 in the Journal of Applied Biomechanics. So to have an article like that new just kind of talk about uh, muscle tendon complex and fascia, and the title of it was Biochemical Behavior of Muscle Tendon Complex During Dynamic Human Movements. Um, so this is, this is kind of the article I, I got a lot of information from, and let me see how many they referenced. Okay, they didn't number the they didn't number the references, but I could tell you guys that it was just in references. It was one, two, three, four, four, five pages of just references. So yeah, it was a pretty pretty interesting article to read from and kind of gain some insight about fascia. Let's see. How long? Okay. Okay, 33 minutes, so. Okay, yeah, so this is about the length I wanted to keep these. Like, I, I didn't want to go too far, too, I didn't want these to go too long, you know, unless more people, unless, um, like, more people had questions and, and stuff, but I'm probably going to end this Q&A live stream here, and again, I might do another one of these throughout the week if I get any more suggestions or if I just find a topic that'd be interesting. Um, but you know the ones on Friday will will still go on. Like I'll still be answer. I'll still take the questions I get from the week and any comments and stuff, and be doing those on Friday. Um, so those are the longer Q and A's. These are going to be like a little shorter, more concise to just more specific topics. So I think I'm going to end this live stream here. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And again, if you guys have any suggestions for future videos, oh, Dunk Progress Month Seven is going to be out to either later tonight or early tomorrow because I'm still finishing that one up. So stay tuned for that video. And again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in and I will see you guys later.